everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiber Flux. Welcome back to week three of the Fiber Flux Fall Crochet Along. We are making this beautiful autumn textures blanket. This is a very simple stitch, but it's a beautiful uh, result with some easy stitches. Uh, we So far, we've learned all about the supplies. We've talked about sizing. We've learned how to do the stitch sequence. And today, for those of you who may need to learn, we're going to talk about changing colors. If you're interested in doing stripes like this, we're going to talk about changing colors. And Or if you're doing a solid blanket, um, just joining a new ball of yarn as well. So we're going to go through that. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, how many rows of each color I did before I switch. If you want to do the exact width of stripes I did, I'm going to talk about the order of the colors and things like that. So if you want to duplicate this blanket exactly, I'm definitely going to walk you through that part as well. Before I get started, I want to, uh, if you don't already know, to hop on over to our Ravelry group and or Facebook group. You can join both or one or the other. And that is our community of crochet along makers. You can uh, show off your work, you can ask questions. There's lots of really talented people in there that kind of jump in and help um, and show off your work as well. It's always very exciting to see what everybody's working on. So without further ado, let's jump right in and talk about our color changes next. Okay, so I've worked up quite a bit of rows and I've changed colors because I wanna show you the next part of this blanket. And it's super easy. Um, if you wanted to do stripes like I'm doing, I'm gonna show you how to change colors. But before I show you how to do that, I wanna just um, talk to you a little bit about the sequence of colors that I'm doing. So um, now I know a lot of you like to change up the colors, you like to change the width and the length of your blankets, and I love to see how you all customize everything. So earlier in the video I gave you multiples for um, the width, so you can change the number of chains, and you can work more rows if you want it to be taller or shorter, for example. Um, now I also wanted to point out that I'm having four rows of these shells here, which um, works out to be eight rows of the pattern because remember we do a row of the shells slash fans whatever you want to call them um, and then we do a row of like the chains to like kind of set them up for the next one so I did um, a row of fans and then the chain row in between a row of fans and then the chain row row of fans chain row row of fans so visually it looks like we have four fans before we switch colors okay so um, eight rows of the pattern before we switch and then I like to start it on a row where you're doing the chains and the single crochet change because it just uh, looks a little bit nicer. Uh, just to give you an idea of how I did the colors. Now I'm going to show you how to join a new ball of yarn if you want to do that, like if you're doing all one solid color. So before we get started, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the color sequencing I did, okay? Um, I'm going to show you how to actually change colors. I'm going to grab the blanket and cut the yarn and show you how to do all that. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to mention that for the blanket I have here, and usually when we do these crochet alongs, I'll make uh, several projects. So I'll make the project over and over again. But for this blanket that I have right here, um, if you're interested in the exact colors I did and the order and the thickness of the stripes, I'm going to tell you about all that. So for this part, or for this blanket rather, I began with this dark gray and then I went to the cream color and then the mustard color and then the pumpkin and then I'm repeating the colors again. Okay, so just in terms of color sequencing. Um, and I used a little bit less than one ball for each section. So for example, let me grab some leftovers I had. This is the cream color. I just had a little bit left. It's not quite enough to keep going with more rows, but it definitely will be enough to add a tassel later on in our crochet along. So I worked, um, you can see here, well actually let's look at one of the colors because it's a little bit easier to see. Um, but I worked, here are the shells here, one, two, three, four of them, as you can see. But remember, in between each one, there are the chains and the single crochets that sort of open them up. So it's actually eight rows of each um, uh, of the pattern. I worked eight rows before I switched to a new color. I mentioned this briefly last week, and I feel like, now you might feel the opposite and want to do yours a little bit differently, but I felt like beginning the new color on row three um, gave the shells the best look. It showed them off the best. They're sort of sitting on top of one another with a new color. With the other one, they, they sort of got a little bit like 
uh, mushed together looking. I don't really know how to describe it any better than that, but um, I personally like the appearance when I begin a new color on row three, okay? So when we made our blanket last week and learned how to do the stitch sequence, we did rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until you get the height that you want, right? So um, I just wanted to let you know about the order of the colors I did, but also how many rows I worked of each color, which was eight. And then also I wanted to give you the tip to begin a new color on row three, okay? So without further ado, we are going to continue because it, as you can see, I'm still working on my blanket as well, and I'm ready to begin on the mustard. So you may remember we had uh, two balls of each color. Now that's for this kind of baby toddler lap blanket size. I didn't want a huge blanket um, because I like to drape mine over a sofa. I think it looks pretty that way. And if it's too big with this chunky yarn, it looks bulky. However, uh, last week I gave multiple, so you can really change the size, but just know if you make your blanket bigger, you'll need more yarn, obviously. Um, but I worked out so that each one of these big thick stripes is about a ball of yarn. Okay. So this is a ball of yarn minus a little bit. See how there's just a little bit of yarn, probably enough for a nice tassel. Maybe two if I'm lucky. But um, so I did a ball of yarn, a little less than a ball of yarn, a little less than a ball of yarn, a little. So I do have some leftovers for some nice tassels at the end of our um, crochet along. So for the next part of our video, we're going to um, learn how to change colors, or if, if you're doing a solid color blanket, learn how to join a new ball of yarn. Now there are tons of ways to change colors or join new yarns. Um, I like to simply cut the yarn and tie the new one on and then weave in the ends later. Feel free to do whatever technique you like to do. These crochets, uh, crochet alongs are all about you and your flexibility and what you want to do. And really at the end, we can really see everybody's creativity and where everybody kind of took the project. So let's learn how to join the new color and then we'll move on from there. Okay, once you've gotten some length on this and you're ready to switch colors, now I've done a few colors just so I can show you because it looks really pretty. I'm just loving it. Um, what we want to do is I just need to work the last little stitch here of the row. And then, now I will say as a side note, there are tons of different ways to join a new ball of yarn. Um, for this one, I'm just going to cut the yarn and fasten off and tie the new one right on, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop, and just pull it to tighten, okay? Now I have my next color ready to go in my sequence, which is the, gonna be this gold kind of mustard color. And what we're gonna do is put your hook back into that stitch that you just worked, and then take the new yarn and just hook it right on there and pull it through. Then what you're gonna do is just tie it right on. Easy as pie. And then you can just weave those ends in later. And then you can just take your hook, bring up a loop, and you're ready to start working on your rows again, okay? So very easy way to join yarn. Okay, so we learn how to do our stitch sequence and change colors if you're doing uh, different colors. If you're doing all one color, you don't have to worry about that part. But for now, just keep working on your blanket. And when we rejoin next week, we're gonna learn how to, now where are they? They ran off, kind of take care of all these ends. And if you like, you can add some tassels to the four corners of your blanket. So we're gonna learn how to make some very easy tassels just using your hands and a good pair of scissors. So stay tuned for next week. And also be sure to join our Ravelry group and our Facebook group. That's where everybody shares things and shows off their work. You can ask questions. There are tons of people that jump right in and help. And also, um, if you share your work on social media, which everyone loves to see, use the hashtag FiberFluxCal to share your work. That's all for this week. I will see you next week for our next part of our beautiful blanket. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and hit that subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. See you next week.